So welcome back to Culture Shock, our little show where we talk about Japanese pop culture. Yes. And today we're talking about Kamishibai. 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 What is Kamishibai? Kamishibai. Kamishibai. Uh, <laughs> we go on like this for hours. <laughs> um, so Kamishibai is actually a forerunner of anime. Ooh. Yes. So it, this started back in the 9th or 10th centuries in Japan by Buddhist monks who wanted to tell stories to kids. Hmm. And what they would do is they would get these big scrolls full of artwork. And they would unfurl these scrolls, and they would have a um, story painted on the scrolls. Oh. So you'd see characters walking across the scroll, and as it unfurled, you'd see those characters continuing to walk and encountering monsters, for example. Oh. And then you'd see them attacking the monsters, and the monsters attacking them. So it would be the story told over the, on, on the scroll um, over the course of, of this sort of Buddhist parable. Wow. Um, and so uh, this evolved into a tradition of, of live storytellers doing these performance pieces of traditional Japanese stories. Wow. Um, so not just monks, but just general people would walk around telling these stories. And they started using, started sort of um, simplifying that down to cards that they'd carry along with them. Hmm. So in fact, you'll see in this, in this uh, piece of artwork here that you've got um, uh, a man standing there with this wooden box and this, this uh, piece of artwork. And so what this performer will do is, um, is he will present to a bunch of uh, people this story and sort of walk through it with the car the, these, these pre-made cards. Now, um, this evolved into a very important thing in, in pre-World War II Japan, early 20th century Japan. And the, um, the, the way it, it worked is that uh, uh, the performer would, would go around on a bicycle. He would stack all these cards in this wooden box on the back of the bicycle and would bike to an, an, some neighborhood in town and then would call all the children together, kind of like an ice cream you know, <laughs> truck. Um, and indeed, the, the, the performer would um, have candy to sell. And that's how he made his money, really. Um, so he'd, he'd sell candy. Um, folks who bought candy could sit in front. Those who didn't had to sit in back. Uh, and then he'd tell two stories. He would tell one story for the boys and one story for the girls. And the stories for the boys were called shonen stories. And the, and the ones for the girls were called shoujo stories. Shoujo. And that's where we get shonen, shonen and shoujo. shoujo. Ah. Um, is that they, they came out of uh, the thing. Because you had boys and girls there and you had to tell something that would entertain both of them. Um, and so you got um, these, these various, you, you have adventure stories for the boys, mm -hmm. romance stories for the girls, <laughs> uh, traditionally. Um, and this is a, um, a very crucial way of telling stories in Japan in, in that, that period for a couple of reasons. Um, one is that there wasn't any television. Um, movies were relatively expensive, but any kid could show up for a Kamishi by performance <laughs> to sit down and watch it. So that, that helped a lot. Also, because of everything Japan went through in the early 20th century and all the wars and so forth, there was a lot of economic hardship. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, people didn't have jobs. So mm -hmm. anyone could get on a bike, walk around, and start mm -hmm. taking up the, this kamishi bike. Now, you'd have to buy the, the artwork from somewhere, but there were um, studios that were you know, pumping these things out. So it was very easy to get in and running, and folks could actually support their families through kamishi bai. The art of storytelling. Well, yeah. the, the, it, it's interesting how they went from scrolls to plates? Uh, yeah, 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 to, um, um, so they started with, 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 with scrolls and then, um, um, I believe it's basically placards. placards. So they, they, they would, they so would paint on those. PowerPoint is not a new yeah, thing. Exactly. No. <laughs> Story, slide, Nishibai slide. is absolutely PowerPoint. <laughs> now, one of the neat things is they would do things like, and we'll see if we have any in these illustrations here which, which show us. Um, uh, you can see as folks, and here's a good example. Um, because these cards are in this wooden frame, as you're taking out w the, the front card, you're revealing part of the back card. So what you, you do is... Partial reveal. Exactly. So if somebody was coming around a corner, for example, you'd show just that edge of the corner. Folks would see somebody coming around the corner, <laughs> and you'd reveal the entire thing as you're telling the, the story. The slow reveal. Exactly. And you'll see this in anime to this day, of how folks will use this... Um, this visual style of storytelling to tell these very simple stories. And in fact, um, many people called, well, uh, television in Japan was originally called electric kamishibai. 
Electric Kamishi Bai. Yeah, that that was that was what it was, it was called. <laughs> wow. Um, and then anime was very much a Kamishi Bai like um, art form because they didn't have much budget. Um, they they frame, focused very much on frame, 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 frame uh, piece by piece by piece. And because the animation really supports that and mm. and supports um, modifications to a scene as opposed to redrawing the scene every frame. Uh, it really became a Kamishi by like performance. It, 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 it's really wild to think that some of the techniques that we don't even think about had come out of this background and that slow reveal being developed basically because of the medium that the storytelling was using at the time and exactly. now we don't even think about it it, it just <laughs> happens naturally. Yeah, and you know, pretty much everybody working in anime in the 60s when anime was first started would have grown up with Kamishibai. So that was very much that storytelling uh, technique that they grew up with. And so Kamishibai performers, uh, performers will stand up there and, and go through these, um, uh, uh, these stories. Uh, and a lot of the early heroes came out of Kamishibai. Um, so there was a character called the Golden Bat, which was the superhero. Um, he flew around and wore a red cape. Hmm. Just saying. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, and, and uh, uh, you know, beat up criminals, basically. Uh, but a, a lot of the traditional, traditional heroes in Japanese culture that sort of grew into manga and anime got their start by ideas from Kamishibai. Wow. They were, they were pumping out dozens of Kamishibai stories every year. Uh, has, is there an archive of these? Or is somebody preserving this for future uh, generations? Uh, they're trying. Um, there, is, there are a few Kamishibai organizations uh, dedicated to, to preserving it. Um, a lot of the artwork was lost over the course of the decades, of course. Um, but there are still Kamishibai performer, performers in Japan, and actually in other parts of the world, that are trying to uh, keep, this, keep this going. Uh, and folks are actually finding it's a great way of education. Um, you know, taking a story and presenting it that way focuses kids in on the story um, in a way that you know um, television can be kind of distracting. Um, this is a, a, a really neat mixed media way of telling a story to kids. Well, if I see somebody at a convention doing this, I have got to see it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it, it, it's worth seeing if you ever get a chance. It's, it's a kind of a spellbinding sort of performance, and it's uh, it's part of history. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Cool. Yeah. That's Kamishibai. Mishibai. <laughs> <laughs>